Hey gang, I got an offer for you today from LinkedIn. As business-to-business marketers, your needs are unique. B2B buying cycles are long and your customers face incredibly complex decisions. Isn't it time you had a marketing platform built specifically for you? LinkedIn ads empower marketers with solutions for you and your customers. LinkedIn ads allow you to build the right relationships, drive results, and reach your customers in a respectful environment. On LinkedIn, you have direct access to build relationships with decision makers. Of the 875 million users on the network, 180 million are senior level executives, 10 million are C-level executives. You will also be able to drive results with targeting and measuring with their tools built specifically for B2B. And best of all, they work. Audiences exposed to brand messages on LinkedIn are six times more likely to convert. LinkedIn ads also rank number one for security, community, and ad experience as part of the Business Insider's Digital Trust Study. Make B2B marketing everything you can be and get $100 credit. It's $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. It's linkedin.com slash MPN. P-N. Terms and conditions apply. Entrepreneurs and Enigma is a podcast for the ups and downs of entrepreneurship. So the wins and the fails that we all face being entrepreneurs and how we learn from adversity. Every week I talk to a different entrepreneur with a story to tell. I'm Seth Goldstein. Come with me on the journey. This is Entrepreneurs Enigma. Let's get started. Hey everybody, it's Seth. As always, welcome to another edition of the Entrepreneur's Enigma podcast. I have a good buddy of mine, Mark Style. He is a business therapist. He is a business coach, business therapist, stress coach. He's done the corporate things. So he knows how to deal with it and help all of us deal with it, deal with entrepreneurship, de-stress, therapy within the company we'll get more into what exactly a business therapist does but hey mark how's it going buddy i'm doing terrific seth how are you and happy 420 oh it is for oh, 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 oh it's 420 of course this is not coming out to may 30th but 420 oh that's a fun date for those who don't know look it up <laughs> and we'll leave it at that enough said enough said exactly so mark you and I, I've met you, did I meet you through Beacon initially? Was it through another, I, we, we crossed paths a bunch of places. I think so, yeah. And I can't remember the origin yeah. of how we met, but we, yeah, we have crossed paths a number of times. It's always been a lot of fun. It's always fun. He's very stylish. Wah, wah, wah. No. <laughs> I'm sure it's not the first time you've heard that. Uh, Heck, your whole business <laughs> is on the mark, you know? So it's sort of like, you kind of embrace the pun, you know? On the Mark Advisors. So, Mark, Mark, get it? Ha, ha, ha. So, it's a dad joke, right? <laughs> Indeed. Exactly. So, Mark, how have you been? How's the weather in your side of, of Philadelphia? <laughs> uh, it's, it's actually a wonderful, beautiful day today. The saying is true today. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. I can say that for today. For today. It, it rains a lot lately, but, you know, it, it's fun. So, so, Mark, we've talked in the past, and you have done the corporate thing and you enjoyed the corporate thing for the most part but you're now out on your own and you've been out your how long have you been out on your own for uh it's been a little over four years now seth wow so you actually so at five is when you make it or break it so you're almost there <laughs> that's right entrepreneur five, five years year you got mark. it isn't it the five-year mark I think I've, I've heard that it's been said. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So Mark, what is it in, in your, what is a business therapist? To you? Why do you call yourself a business therapist versus a business coach and all that stuff? So yeah, it's an interesting story. Uh, mm -hmm. when I went out on my own, I thought I'd be a business coach, but when I did mm -hmm. more research and talked to people that I knew who were business coaches, I realized that's not where my wheelhouse is, not where my strengths are. It's not in the getting certified in a methodology and just applying that methodology, the processes, the compliance, the motivation, that kind of thing. Because my 30 years in the corporate world and startup worlds enabled yeah. me to, I think, do more than that. And so what I did, believe it or not, was I did, without even knowing, having coined the term yet, I did business therapy on myself. I looked at what my wow. strengths were, yeah. uh, what I love doing, uh, what energized me, and what people would pay me for. Oh, that's and tanky. I that's came tanky. up with three pillars to that. 
mm-hmm. strategic advising, business coaching, mm-hmm. and stress management. Um, those are the three things that I are my superpowers, if you will. Um, yeah. Having done all of these things to a large extent in the corporate world uh, with mentoring others, colleagues, and so forth in that corporate and startup world. And so those are the three things that the pillars, I call them, for business therapy. And what that enables me to do as a business therapist is allow entrepreneurs to get unstuck, overcome obstacles, and achieve sustainable breakthrough performance by leveraging and potentially realigning their strengths, talents, and interests with their business strategies and daily activities that enable them to go from their point A to their point B, whatever that may be for them. The I difference with the coaching is the coaching, many coaches, I won't say all of them, it's more of a cookie cutter, like here's mm-hmm. the process that works for everybody. We're going to apply it to you. My approach is, you know, who are you? Yeah. And what are your strengths? And how do we uh, get a, uh, a process and apply an approach that suits you personally? I love because that. everybody's different. Yeah, I love that. And what is stress management? I know what the words mean. I know what stress and management, and I get the English definition of it. Like, But what in your mind is like, in the business world, what is stress management? You're not running out and saying, I quit you, Jack. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you asked that, Seth, because you're right. It means different things to different people. Yeah. The way I define it is it's more of a mindset approach. Mm-hmm. Uh, it a- addresses things like, uh, how to handle adversity, how to increase one's resilience to the vicissitudes of their life and their business. In particular, with my client set, are very small businesses, anywhere from solopreneur to 100 people, right? Oh, well, After that, are, it gets you, are, you know, political. You're, yeah, you're an SB, not an SMB. You really are. A yes, small business. exactly. Thank you. You're an SB. And, you know, to me, when it gets beyond 100 people, it's you, know, you get turf battles, you get CYAs, you get, uh, you know, that's the reason uh, why you're not doing corporate anymore. Well, that's, yeah, that's one of them. Um, so in that world, um, a cookie cutter methodology really doesn't work because these folks don't, you know, they can't it being, it straight jackets them. You know, they have to have this meeting on this day at this time with these people. And, and this is the template. It, doesn't, you it use. doesn't work that way. It just doesn't, when you're a small business, not for those nimble. size yeah, businesses. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break, hear from our sponsors, and get right back to the show. Support for this show and all the other shows on the Marketing Podcast Network is provided by Momento. If you have your own podcast, you know how hard it is to produce and get all the cool little clips out and all that stuff. Promoting is half the battle. What if you could upload your episode, video, or audio and have AI pull out all the best moments for you to use in social media? Well, you can with Memento. Upload the video or audio, review the recommended clips, click a couple of buttons, customize the colors, fonts, and hit save. Instantly, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, Facebook, and LinkedIn posts all materialize before your eyes. All with video and audio embedded for dynamic promotions that drive people to the episode. And the AI kicks out show notes even, transcripts, and even social media captions. All you have to do is review and post them. Because you listen to this show, you get a free trial of Memento to test for yourself. Go to bit.ly slash Memento MPN and sign up today. It's bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash Memento M-P-N. Exactly. And so uh, that's why my, that, my custom approach works very well for those very small businesses. Wow. And back to the stress management part that you yeah. were talking about. Um, so it's, you know, getting resilience because in that world, the personal life inevitably intersects with the business life because you 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 can't escape it. Yeah. Yeah. Entrepreneurs work many hours Mm -hmm. and you can't help it, especially if you have a family or a spouse or something like that, Mm -hmm. that becomes difficult. And sometimes it's hard to compartmentalize what you're doing in the business world versus what your personal is. So I help with that. That's a hard thing for people to do. And that's a stressor. Yeah. Exactly. And I had that in my own life. And I was able to, and I had, I'm not licensed therapist, but 
I apply real world techniques that worked for me and I know have worked for others to a similar set of people of entrepreneurs and very small business owners, right? Yeah, your, your wife still talks to you and your kids still like you. So, you well, I, I, I you know, that that's debatable. another, that's another topic for another time, <laughs> but yes, you're right. Yes. You're right. Well, that's, that's my uh, point that you're able to, now you're able to take what your knowledge is when you're in the corporate world too. It's different. You're working nonstop too, but you do have your technically, 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 you have your weekends. As an entrepreneur, it's so easy for you to, to say, oh, "What's that? oh crap? It's Saturday? Oh man!" My wife's like, "We got soccer practice." And I'm like, "Well, I can't <laughs> go because like, that's what I need to do and that kind of stuff." So it's kind of crazy. So it is a very yeah. different lifestyle, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So in your mind, because you've done the corporate gauntlet, we'll call it. There's so many different words for the corporate world. What is the best thing about being an entrepreneur to you? So uh, the best thing for me personally is that I am now doing, I think everything I've done in the corporate and startup worlds has kind of led to this. And Ooh, now I am putting together all of those, that knowledge, wisdom, and skills and talents into what I'm doing now. And so it's perfect for me. I'm doing what I love doing. And so I leap out of bed every day. I can't wait to get to help people and help entrepreneurs oh, yeah. and business owners get to their point B and, and succeed and grow, oh, right? Fantastic. And I'm very grateful and fortunate to have that kind of approach and be able to do things that I love. It's like when you ask a baseball player, they probably, you're making many millions of dollars, but they probably do it for free because they love it. Yeah, they're doing Maybe it not, it's but, fun. Well, but they, not they're the, doing what they love. You should enjoy your work because you're doing more of that than you're doing the, the other stuff, so. Exactly, at, at least the majority of the time. You know, you can't, not 100% of the time, but the majority of what you're doing, you should be enjoying it. And that increases the probability of being successful when you're enjoying what you do and you love putting the time in. You're, yeah. not, you're not waking up out of bed, you know, you're leaping out of bed. You're not waking up going, oh, another day of this. Oh my goodness. Oh, I can't wait to get through the day. Like yeah. imagine an entrepreneur having that approach. Uh, what do you think the probability of them succeeding is? Not good. So then what's on the flip side, what keeps you up at night? Uh, so what keeps me up at night? Um, well, usually coffee. Um, <laughs> that does it to most people. <laughs> um, you know, a though, good, though I can drink coffee late in the day and I can still fall asleep. A sports uh, event, a playoff game like yesterday in the West Coast that goes, you know, kind of late. And, you know, you get so into it that you just you realize after it's done. Oh, my goodness. It's after midnight. What's going on here? Right. But as so, an entrepreneur, uh, does anything keep you up at night now that you're kind of like not in the corporate grind? Yes, I will say that um, for many of my clients, it's there, there's no W2, you're, you know, many of my clients were, were in corporate as well. They're, they either bought franchises or started their own business. And it's that the world of W2s has gone away, right? Yeah. <laughs> so now you're, for for you know, worse. yeah. You've got to hunt and eat what you kill kind of thing. And yeah. it's a very different approach than, you know, being in the corporate world and, oh, I had a bad day. I'm still getting paid. You're an yeah, entrepreneur. Yeah, you have a bad day and you're in selling and you're not getting paid. Right. So yeah, those commission. things um, keep my, my clients up at night. And those are the kinds of things we work on to, so that, you know, again, part of that stress management <laughs> to get that under control because, you know, everyone's going to have bad days. And uh, one of the things too. that we can touch on here is that yeah. there's, you've heard of triggers, right? Oh, uh, God, this yeah. something, you know, the first thing that happens in the day, you lose a sale that triggers you. The rest yeah. of your day is terrible, right? It's hard, yeah, it's hard, um, hard to break those too. Hard to break those. That's something that I work with many clients on mm -hmm. and how to break that and how to get that out of your head and, and keep going and, and be productive for the rest of the day. And by the way, you know, there are, Triggers aren't always negative. There are positive triggers too. And people don't talk about that much, but did you ever have a day where everything went right? And you, Sometimes. at the end of the day, you said, what a great day. I wish I could have more of these. And then you go to sleep, but you yeah. don't reflect on what could have happened that caused that great day. Did something happen in the morning? Did something happen the previous night? Did I have a different attitude about it because something happened? How do I repeat that? How do I get that going so I can have more great days like that? Love it. Oh, I love that because it's true. You, and you don't really think about a good day. Let's evaluate it. It's more like a bad day. Let's evaluate it. 
So exactly because as they say, the negative has a much more, you know, it's what five compliments for every one criticism yeah. in order to balance it out. Right. It's crazy. Yeah. The negatives have a much bigger of impact on us. Yes. So what is the most important thing to carry with you all the time? Now, this can be physical. It can be metaphysical. It can be, you know, any of those verbs. Well, there's a lot of, a lot of ways to go on this one, I guess. Yeah. But I would say for my own professional and personal success and happiness, what I carry with me all the time is curiosity. I am just a naturally curious person. Um, and, uh, you know, if you have ever taken an Enneagram test, I'm an investigator. So I just love to dig down and figure things out, solve the puzzle. And that is probably the one thing that has enabled my success more than anything else, because of the questions I'm able to ask, allowing clients to look at their business through a different lens that they might not have done before. One of the most common responses I get from conversations are, wow, I never thought about my business like that before. That's I didn't right. realize that I could do, I could alter my model a little bit or test this little concept out that doesn't cost me much and not a lot of effort. And that could be the boon, that could be the one thing that gets me to my goals and, and, and grow beyond and realize my full potential and the business's full potential. I love it. And it's, it's so true. It's this little thing sometimes that are just like eureka moments. And it's just like, wow. You just have to take a pause. A lot of eureka moment. That's a good way to put it, Seth. I have a feeling, you know, I don't, I'm not a, uh, I'm not omnipotent, but I have a feeling that my conversations with people in general result in a preponderance of eureka moments more so than it. the normal conversations. And then it's worth it. So Mark, where can people find you online? So they want to have these eureka moments. <laughs> my website is on the marketvisors.com. There you can find all sorts of even more detail than what we discussed mm -hmm. about the approach that I take. There's lots of testimonials. I even have oh. a, a video montage of testimonials on there. With his website. I like it. <laughs> and so that's probably the best place to reach me. And of course, on LinkedIn, if you just look up my name, uh, the way it's spelled S T Y L E, there's not too many other people with that last name. I think you'll I just search on that and you'll find me. You'll find him. He's smiling and he's got a good head of hair. So. Oh, I'm jealous. I don't have hair. So, you know, I'm like people with good hair. I'm like, God bless them. So, <laughs> uh, you know, a lot of superheroes don't have hair, right? Or, or is you it know. the villains? Well, I mean, look at The Rock and Vin oh, Diesel. That's true. And All right. Bruce so the, Willis. And, the uh, actors Kojak. Remember people. Kojak? <laughs> All right. You're right. Yes. Yes. So on uh, that note, we will see <laughs> with Kojak and all. We will see everyone next time. Thanks. Thank you for having me today. I appreciate this it. This has been so much fun, my friend. That was a great show. If you're enjoying Entrepreneurs Enigma, please review us in the podcast directory of your choice. Every review helps other podcast listeners find our show. If you're looking for other podcasts in the marketing space, look no further than the Marketing Podcast Network at marketingpodcasts.net. Goldstein Media hopes you have enjoyed this episode. This podcast is one of the many great shows on the MPN Marketing Podcast Network. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Jonathan Gaby hosts a great podcast called Marketing Distilled. He's the master distiller. Jonathan, tell us what these fine folks are going to get out of listening. On Marketing Distilled, you'll hear from industry experts and me to learn about more marketing things and taking those complex things and distill them down into actionable strategies or tactics. Amazing. Where can people subscribe? You can find the show at marketingpodcast.net or search for Marketing Distilled wherever you get your podcasts. You heard him. Go subscribe. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.